this one with our biggest client today. Don't even ask anything. There's always the boy. My name's Cobra. Um. You are. Hi, Ufoma. Hello. Thank you for joining us on FTV. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, how did you come about acting? In 2002, I was. Before then, 2001, I had been in a pageant in school in Unilag, uh, Miss News Hall, and then I contested for Miss Ebony, which I won. And the thing with. I don't know, maybe life generally, you just aspire for more or aspire to more. And after I won Miss Ebony, I, I wanted more. So I wanted a bigger stage and I, I put in for Miss Commonwealth at the time, a national pageant. And after Miss Commonwealth 2002, I didn't win, I didn't even make it to the top 10, but I, was, I won the prize for Miss Congeniality, which is the friendliest contestant in camp. And I was supposed to go to the, the sponsor's office to get my, my gifts. And I walk into this office and there's um, the marketing director sitting down and there's another guy sitting down. I didn't know him. And uh, they both happened to be rubble, so I had to dig away. <laughs> so I got in and I was like, oh, Nico. He was like, oh, he's also rubble. You need to dig away. I said, Nico. I said, don't you know who he is? I said, nope. I said, oh, that's Zebedro. I was like, oh my God, that is the Zebedro, you know. So I went on and on, talking about all the the wonderful content that I grew up watching in Joss, you know, from uh, um, NTA, PR TV, Joss, and, and what have you. And I, when I, you know, I finished talking and Uncle Seb said, have you considered acting? And I was just like, don't do that. No, no, I haven't considered it. And I'm not considering it, don't. Just Why? kill it. At the time, and I think it's the reason why I'm patient with people now who do not have the patience for Nollywood. At the time, I wasn't a fan of um, a home videos. Um, whether we like it or not, I think America has done a good job with, with media and the propaganda that they sell. Um, the tools with which they sell their culture, they sell their country, they sell their beliefs. And I was one of those people who swallowed it hook, line, sinker, boot, fisherman, sea, sky. <laughs> you know, so I think I was uh, at the time it was stupid. And I didn't, I, I didn't see myself in that line. I'd never, of all the things I dreamt of being growing up as a kid, acting was not on that list. So I said no. What did you kept, want to be? Huh? Very funny things. I wanted to be a detective. Thanks to watching P.S. I Love You, Moonlighting, Matlock, <laughs> and all the other detective series, you know, on TV at the time. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be a detective. But uh, he, he, he very gradually and politely, you know, kept trying to push and say, you know, it's something you should consider if you haven't considered it. And then I got rude and I said, you know what, sir, drop it. If I wanted to act, I'd go straight to Hollywood. And he goes, ah, when you get to Hollywood, remember, remember me. me. <laughs> I can never forget those words. They hurt my fragile heart. <laughs> so about two years down the line, I had finished from, I studied French, my first degree is in French language. I had finished from French village, but I agree. But the guys, you know, on campus had not even started their third year. So I knew that I had a whole year to sit at home. Yeah. Guess who I called? Yeah. Without shame. I dusted the card he gave me. <laughs> I called Zemidro. And I said, me go, sir. This is for my general. Okay. I said, sir, I'm the girl that you met. He said, I know who you are. How is Hollywood? I said, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my father. Oh. <laughs> You know, but he was he was nice enough to hear me out. And I was lucky enough that at the time he was auditioning for a movie. So I went in, got a script, came back the next day to read and I got home. <laughs> that was Nollywood. Wow, wow, wow. So how has it been so far? I think with every journey in life, you know, um, the process has everything. I think you know, you have so much being thrown at you the lemon, sometimes the lemonade, sometimes the seed for you to plant, you know, so um, I've had, I've had, I've had um, a wonderful 13 years so far in, in Nollywood, uh, wonderful in the sense that every downturn that I've had has been 
divinely orchestrated to make me the person I am today. A person who, by the way, I'm very proud of. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's, it's been a good journey. It's been a good one. So, what was it that you Um, so, I recently produced, wrote, produced, and directed um, a movie called Christmas is Coming. Is that your first movie? Your first production? No. No, I've had my very first production was a short film. No, my very first production was like a magazine program called Being Mommy. Um, then I went on to do a short film, and yes, then I went on to yes. do a house series. Then I went on to do a, a PG talk show. Then I went on to do another magazine program called Afro Fire. And then I went on to do a feature film called What Just Happened. And then I did Christmas is Coming. One way or the other, Christmas is Coming happens to be the first of my productions that I'm releasing. Um, it's my first feature film being released, the other is not yet released. And it's the first that is going to the cinema, so dang, it is like my first baby, yes. <laughs> Can you spill some of the beans? What is it about? Okay, so uh, Christmas is Coming is a romantic comedy about a tomboy who um, is unwittingly transformed into a girl by her flatmate. Um, it was supposed to be a prank. Unknown to them, she had a pitch, like a big presentation that day the prank was pulled. So they had taken off her comfy clothes and she had to go to that presentation as a lady. So things happened. A lot of things happened. But I think the most important thing that happened for her that day was, you know, meeting someone and kind of like hitting off what she thought was love. And there were consequences of that and she had to face them. All of this transpired five days to Christmas, so the movie ends on Christmas Day and you know, it's a, like, you know, a big banger, like a big happy ending. Um, it stars Shola Shobawale, Zach Oji, Choma Chukuka, Diemi Okalamo, myself, Mary Lazarus, Gregor J. Poor, Michael O'Connor, and you know, all these wonderful actors. It's such a hilarious Christmas movie. I like Christmas, sorry. I love Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. You think you're a boy, right? What if you sleep and wake up different? I have a presentation with our biggest client today. Don't even ask anything. There's always the boy. Um, you are with a guy and you have no underwear on. She's such a charmer. I love Love Christmas. So, um, one of the things I know that this film would do to anyone is if you love Christmas, you just feel all mushy. If you're a Grinch and you do not love Christmas, when you see this movie, you probably would love Christmas. It has a very, very Christmas feel to it. And what we try to do is, you know, arouse some nostalgia in people so when you hear the carols and you see all the lighting and everything you just be like when is it christmas again you know so we usually say we're pulling christmas closer because we open in the cinemas on the 24th of november christmas is about a month away so we want you to feel christmas, before christmas. <laughs> how long for how long did you produce this because you have done it during christmas i'm thinking sometime last year yes so what we did was i is it safe to say we started filming maybe two years ago because what we started doing was taking footage for Christmas. Um, I mean, the only time you're gonna have the city lit up and have, you know, um, um, shots with a lot of, you know, Christmassy things going on would be during Christmas. So two years ago, I got a team to start taking and, and we couldn't even exhaust the footage we had. We had so much footage. So I got a team to start taking um, footages for Christmas. Um, lovely stab shots. However, we still had to take some this year, believe it or not, yes, 2017. So we had to look look out for um, the wonderful lighting. Some of the exterior shots we had to do ourselves and that ran into a lot of cost, but I mean, happily, thankfully for me, because I love Christmas, all of that wouldn't go to waste. They get to light up my house, right? So we had to do um, a lot of work to light up some places that we specific places that we wanted to to film and shoot at but we started taking footage last year 
uh, two years ago, last year, and this year. And then principal photography with the actors went into play in June. We filmed like um, for the most of June we were, you know, on set. And then we immediately started working on cutting it down because we knew that if, they, if there was going to be any pickup shoots or anything that we needed to adjust, we'd have to adjust it probably during Christmas, so November into December. And so we had to be very strategic with our editing and we started edi editing on the spot, you know, um, as we were filming. It was a fun shoot, I mean, not without its challenges, Jesus Christ. Oh, it's challenging. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I think one of the biggest challenges that produces this side of the the world face is location and um, God help us, yeah I know we need to set up studios right, that's a lot of money, yeah. we, will. <laughs> we will, we will come, there's so many things that have come now that I personally do not believe they've come at this point but I'm so proud that I have stayed in Hollywood to this time to see them materialize and I know that will get better. So studios will come. In the meantime, we have to shoot on location. It means that we have to go to individuals and ask to use their properties at a fee or sometimes, you know, at a bargain. Um, so this particular house we're going to use, awesome, lovely for the Christmas dinner. Beautiful, big, well lit and then guess what? They had wonderful Christmas decor. I had to just go with that house. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the madam of the house was out of the country, so I had to keep talking to her while she was away. And she insisted on a certain date. And I said, but you know, I have my cast and crew on, on, on standby already to film. And she said, you know, it had to be this date. So I called up everybody. Let me just say for now that I worked with probably the best cast and crew that you can find. They were the most understanding, they were the most committed, they were the most loyal people. And so at every point in time that I had to move shoot and I called and I said, hey, Hachula, please, the lady that this is, says, she says, okay, when, when, when do they want us to? She look and I said, okay, fine, let's go. I'll call Uncle Zach and I'm like, Uncle Zach, please, they want to shoot at this, 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 that. Chioma actually had to sacrifice a job in Abuja, in, in, in Ghana for this shoot. Choma, I've said it before, I owe you a house. You are an wow. amazing human being. Thank you so much. Thank you. She had to actually lose a job in Ghana for, you know, all the moving and all around for this shoot. Um, you know, then the lady says this particular date and we say, okay, you know, let's get on it. Um, that day she comes back, the day before we send a message, we call and we say, okay, you know, we're shooting this scene tomorrow. She's like, fine. Um, the day of the shoot, we go there in the morning. Myself and um, one of my assistants, we go there, we sit with her, and she's like, okay, let your team come in and start dressing the place. Everybody was on set that day at, I think the early, the latest anyone was on set that day was 7.30 a.m. Everybody was on set, we were ready, makeup, because we have a lot of ladies in that scene. It was like a big Christmas scene, you know. So we started makeup, we started dressing up, you know, um, the team went to her house to, to start putting up Decker, the art direction team. At about nine-ish, we get a call. And they said, um, we got kicked. And I said, it's not, it's not possible. I mean, yeah, I, I, I sat with her and, you know, she said, we'll come ahead and do, uh, you know, do stuff. And they're like, no, we got kicked out. So I get into the car. That offered to come with me maybe he could talk to just find out what the problem was and talk to someone we get in the car we drive down there and they wouldn't even open the gate it was very very heartbreaking for me every